What's up? Today I'm going to be talking about five reasons why I love civil structural engineering. I'm Matt Picardle. I'm a licensed civil engineer specializing in structural engineering in California. I've been in the structural engineering private consulting design industry for about seven years now, working mostly on buildings. So that's where my background is coming from. Let's get into it. Reason number one is that it's simple. Well, more like it can be simplified. As a specialization, structural engineering has a reputation of being more mathematical heavy. And some students may shy away from it because it's too hard or too difficult or there's too much math. And I thought the same thing as a student. I thought it was hard, I wasn't too great at math, and I thought it was difficult, but I did find it interesting. In college, at university, they teach you all of these uh, mechanical classes, math classes, statics, dynamics, concrete, steel, and they tend to go really theoretical. So it is intimidating uh, if you're in that type of environment. But once I got into the industry, I kind of just boiled it down to two things. It's know your statics and know your load path. Load path meaning how horses travel through a structure, basically tracing down the loads from the building all the way down to the foundation. If you know those two things, that's pretty much what the industry is. You can simplify things all the way down to a statics problem. And in design work, you need to be able to do that because of all these fancy structural analysis programs. A lot of new engineers will do some complex modeling in those, but sometimes they don't know how exactly how it behaves. For example, my professors taught me that a skyscraper is made up of uh, thousands of parts, uh, thousands of analysis. It's complex when you're trying to look at it first from a, maybe from a 3D model, it's, it's mind boggling. There's a lot of pieces going into it. How do you even start that? But if you simplify it down to what a skyscraper, a high rise essentially is, it's just a cantilever beam. It behaves the same way. A lot of the forces, a lot of the moments are gonna be at the foundation, at the bottom of the cantilever. And by using load paths, you're gonna drag all of those forces all the way down to the foundation. And if I look at this complex 3D analysis model and it's not behaving like a cantilever beam, something is probably wrong with the model. Same thing with bridges. Some bridges can look really complex. How do you even wrap your head around this? How do you even start this structural model for this bridge? Well, bridges are essentially simple beams or continuous beams. They have moments and they have shears and you can actually see why some bridges are shaped like a moment diagram. It all comes together. That's why I think it's so cool how complex structural engineering can be, but you can always simplify it down to statics. Number two is that you make an impact. Structural engineering, it's a lot of responsibility. We are responsible for the public safety of potentially thousands of people, whoever's using the buildings. So we need to design our structures to resist wind, earthquakes, make sure they don't fall down. You can see how important this is when disasters happen, like the Surfside condo collapse or when bridges collapse. It is important work. And you see this a lot, especially during maybe more of the less developed countries where they don't have structural engineering you know, in their buildings. If a natural disaster happens, then you see that a lot of their buildings basically collapse, infrastructure collapse, lives are lost, economies are destroyed, homes, offices, hospitals, those are gone and it's a huge price. So for me, knowing that my work really matters and does have an impact on the built environment and on people's lives, that's something that I take a lot of pride in. And number three is you have tangible results. The buildings that we design get built and they last for decades, maybe 50 years, maybe even 100 years. Hell, some ancient structures are still there, like the pyramids, so maybe thousands of years. It's so cool to see your projects uh, get built and you can drive by them. If you're in the architectural, engineering, or construction industry, we can all relate when we drive by a building and we know we had some part of it. We were part of a team that got that structure built that people are enjoying and using. And we've all flexed to someone and just be like, hey, yeah, I worked on that building. Pretty cool, huh? I think that's one of the best things about it. I've designed some buildings that my family uses and they visit. So it's, it's really cool to see them using those structures that I actually had a hand in designing. Number four is problem solving. To me, structural engineering is sometimes just like solving a bunch of puzzles and your tool belt is your structural engineering knowledge or, or most of the time it's 
statics and construction material design knowledge. So to me, actually being able to use the things that I learned in school, all the math, all the mechanics of materials, concrete classes, steel classes, all those come together and I can actually use those to solve this real world problem. And if I use it well, I help out my team, I help out the architectural team, I help out the contractors and the owners, the developers. So actually using my knowledge to solve problems, solve puzzles, but it helps the team out as well and makes the building a better design. That's something that's really cool to me. My undergrad wasn't wasted, my master's degree wasn't wasted, I'm using all of those things. And for me, solving puzzles isn't boring. It's something that I enjoy doing. And for the most part, most of my days are problem solving, whether it's an actual structural design problem, problem, it might be a construction problem, but I'm using all of these skills to do that. So for me, it's not boring. It's something that I look forward to doing. It's something that I can get lost in at work because the work is really interesting to me. And number five is lifelong learning. In the structural engineering industry, if you're with the right firm, it's an industry that I can see myself never running out of things to learn. I always feel like I'm learning something new every day because we work with so many different materials, concrete, wood, CLT, modular, steel, cold form steel, and they all have their different structural systems to each of those materials. Then you have construction, they have different construction techniques, how the construction process is and how you can help in that. And that's just the technical side. There's a whole nother side to people skills, to business skills. What do you do as a project manager? Billing, how do you motivate and handle a team? How do you mentor the next generation of new engineers that are coming into your office? How do you bring in new projects to the office? How do you deal with different types of personalities from the architect, the contractor, and even your own team. There is so much to learn. And for me, that's something I really value because if I'm not learning, I'm bored. And even though we have the same types of projects, for those types of projects, even though they're similar to what we've worked on before, there's always something different about them. There's always something unique about that project that gives you unique challenges. So even if it's the same type, it's still interesting. I'm still excited to receive new projects coming in to get to work on them, especially if it's something I've never worked on before. I think that's so cool and so important to have in any profession that you go into that you're excited about the projects that you work on. And what's really cool and maybe a bonus is that from all these things that you're learning, all of those skills that you develop in the technical side, problem solving side, business, real estate, all those skills can be transferred to different industries and different positions. I've known structural engineers that a couple years in, they figured that they didn't like or they got tired of the private design industry and they would transfer into the government, become a plan checker, use their structural engineering skills there. They'd go into the construction industry Industry where they got to be on the field a lot more, still being useful as a structural engineer, or they would go into project management or programming. I even knew a structural engineer that uh, quit the industry, went into real estate, and just made a bunch of money because he used his knowledge of the real estate industry that he learned from his structural engineering career, and he leveraged that to, to make his own real estate company. I actually made a video on different career paths where you can use your structural engineering skills. I'll link it uh, somewhere over here and in the description below. And you're an engineer, even if you want to pivot into a completely different field. You're a problem solver. You have those skills. You know how to break down problems. You know how to solve them. Think logically. So it should be an easy pivot to go into those other career paths that you are might that you might be interested in later on in your career. And my next video is going to be about all the bad things about structural engineering that uh, you might hear people complaining about. So I want to give you that so you can have some of the cons of the structural engineering industry and figure out if it's the right career for you. So make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can be informed once that video releases. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.